If you're thinking about making the move out of California, then in this video, I'm going to show you why moving from California to Oklahoma, specifically Tulsa, Oklahoma, might be the best option for you. Now, I'm going to venture a guess. If you're not familiar with Oklahoma at all, you're probably thinking that it's pretty podunk. Uh, you might not even know where Tulsa, Oklahoma is, but I promise you, watch this video and you're going to have a whole different appreciation and I'm going to show you uh, how Tulsa, Oklahoma is absolutely going to knock your socks off. I'm going to go over facts and data comparing California to Oklahoma, but then throughout this video, you're actually going to see the lifestyle that is going to wow you. And Tulsa, Oklahoma is incredible. I'm going to show you how not only can you lower your cost of living by moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma or one of our surrounding suburbs, but you can also elevate your lifestyle. I'm Sabrina Shaw. I'm your local real estate agent here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I make these videos for you. So if you're thinking about making that move to Tulsa, Oklahoma, you'll reach out to me so that me or someone on my team can show you around. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're thinking about making that move in nine days, 90 days, nine months, it's never too early and it's never too late to reach out and give us a call. And if this is your first time to our channel and you wanna know everything that there is to know about living in Tulsa, Oklahoma and our surrounding suburbs, then tap that little bell notification and subscribe. That way you'll be the first to know what's going on in our local Tulsa area real estate market. There are plenty of fantastic reasons to move from California to Oklahoma. I'm going to go over all of them, but your number one reason is going to be your cost of living. I was researching on bank rate and this absolutely blew my mind, but your money goes so much further. So for example, like I said, researching on bank rate, if you make $100,000 in San Diego, then you only need to make $30,900 here in Tulsa to maintain that same standard of lifestyle. And I can't even imagine, of course I'm not from California, but having $100,000 only equate to a $30,900 living here absolutely is crazy. Okay, what about Los Angeles or Long Beach, California? You're going to, you only need to make $29,500 to maintain that same standard of living. Sacramento, $37,000. Fresno, $41,000. Oakland, $31,400. San Francisco, $25,600. So that's pretty astounding, but wait until you see the actual housing that you can get. I mean, there's give and take, but you are literally elevating your lifestyle. And I'm going to save it for the end, but make sure you stay until the end because I'm going to show you uh, different housing options and how much you get for your money. So, do you want this? this. Now it's not all rainbows and roses here. I am going, there are definitely, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. So I'm going to be completely transparent with the cons. So your first con is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Your employers are going to pay about 15% less than they would in California, according to salary.com. But there are two things with that. 
So you can make that up with remote work. You know, now that you have the ease of remote work, a lot of um, my clients that are moving from California are keeping their jobs remotely, having that income here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And if that's the case, depending on your flexibility, you know, another con would be if you have to work on California hours. Uh, you guys are two hours behind us. So 8 a.m. my time is 6 a.m. your time. So that can make a difference if you're, you know, working California hours remotely, you know, that could make a difference, especially like dinner time um, and hanging out and things like that after work hours. So if you have, you know, a nine to five day, um, in your on California hours, you know, your day wouldn't finish up till 7 p.m. here. So if you're not a night owl, that could put a little bit of a damper on it. But you still have your weekends and then you're getting the later start in the morning. So you can, you know, easily go to the gym and read and enjoy a great cup of coffee all before you even have to start the day. Now, Tulsa used to be the oil capital of the world, which, which has had some great benefits for Tulsa, and energy is a major industry here in Tulsa. Two major employers here are Williams and One Oak. Both are Fortune 500 companies, but when we have, um, you know, in the past, Oklahoma, Tulsa, when there have been downturns in the market with energy, then it's really hit our economy hard. But the leadership uh, for the past couple decades has been working to really diversify our economy, and they have done a great job with that so that we're not solely reliant on the energy sector. Tulsa has a really strong presence in advanced manufacturing, having some of the nation's largest manufacturers like AAON, Whirlpool, uh, Sofidel. Aerospace is a big industry in Tulsa. You have American Airlines, Nordam, you've got Spirit Aerosystems, and in fact, the American Airlines maintenance space in Tulsa is the largest commercial aviation facility in the world. And I get clients here, I've gotten a handful of clients who have moved from you know pla places across the United States to work at the American Airlines maintenance space. I said it's the largest in the world, uh, the facility spans 33 acres with maintenance hangers, uh, shop space covering over 3 million square feet. Nordam's headquartered in Tulsa. It's one of the largest independently owned aerospace companies. Transportation and logistic industries have a presence due to our central location and the cost effectiveness here. Amazon and Macy's have a distribution center. The Tulsa area also has two Class 1 railroads, uh, BNSF Railway and Union Pacific, and three short-line railroads. Tulsa's high-tech sectors are growing, and, and recently Tulsa was awarded with the designation as a technology hub, which there is so much excitement around. The region is home to startup and globally-based information technology businesses. You've got Northern Data, which is a global cloud and data center service company. Google's second largest data centers in Prior, which is 45 minutes from Tulsa. Tulsa is the second most inexpensive state for electrical vehicle charging. And it's home to the number one mid-size electric utility provider in the South, the Public Service Company of Oklahoma, PSO. And so many companies in the automotive industry have made their move to Tulsa's electric automotive corridor. Then of course you have the healthcare industry, retail, and local business. And, and there is a thriving young professional community, along with a thriving entrepreneurial community where there are just a plethora of options to get involved and thrive here. Your top employers are going to be in the energy sector, healthcare, aerospace, manufacturing, transportation, and logistics. Now, Tulsa is a city of 400,000 people, and in the Tulsa Metro, you have approximately 1 million people. Now, I am completely aware that Oklahoma is vastly different from the cities that I talked about. We don't have the beautiful ocean or the gorgeous mountains. You know, we have four seasons, but we also don't have the traffic. We don't have the smog. We don't have the crazy politics. And don't worry, I'm going to touch on those topics too. And even though we don't have the ocean and we don't have the mountains uh, and we don't have the the vast mountains like you do. The Tulsa, Oklahoma area is beautiful. There are so many day or weekend trips that you can take in Oklahoma that you will absolutely adore. 
You can drive up to the Quartz Mountains. Uh, you can spend an afternoon at Turkey Mountain. It's, it's really a hill, uh, but we call it Turkey Mountain. Uh, you've got the Philbrook Museum, the Gilcrease Museum, the Tulsa Botanical Gardens, the Gathering Place. I mean, there are so many things to do. So like I said, not California, but it's pretty beautiful, right? Now, first I wanna show you our little mini LA. Now, when I first started real estate years ago, my very first real estate client was a transplant from California, specifically LA. And she became such a great friend and actually opened my eyes to how great downtown was. She has uh, since passed, but was just an incredible human. We went to so many great spots and she told me, you know, that Tulsa didn't seem to appreciate. Um, if you're from Tulsa, you don't really appreciate your downtown. And I completely get that. And you know, when I was in high school, our downtown was not what it was. And our city leaders have done a ton to revive it because it, you know, it truly is great. It has a great history as I'm going to show you. But now I completely appreciate downtown. It is one of my favorite places. You know, my favorite people to go downtown with are transplants because they find the coolest spots. They know where everything is at. Now, Tulsa is pretty unique for a Southern state, and that's because Tulsa was once the oil capital of the world. And this caused major population growth very quickly. But instead of the normal, you know, Southern migration, uh, we had migration from the East Coast. So we had a lot of money coming into Tulsa. And, you know, that is evident when you're downtown and you see our buildings. In fact, we have one of the largest uh, collection of Art Deco buildings in the United States. So when you come to visit Tulsa, you definitely need to uh, sign up for some of the Tulsa tours. And my friend Becky DeVore does an amazing job with that. Uh, we, she has done a podcast and we talk about Tulsa and you see Tulsa through her eyes. And I am telling you, you do not want to miss a tour with her. You've got a lot of live music. You have great local restaurants and places to hang out fantastic brunches, dinners, so many cool concepts. You have the Performing Arts Center. You know, there's a big art scene in downtown Tulsa. So, you know, the first Friday of every month is the Art Crawl, and that's in the Arts District. We have several museums uh, in and outside of our downtown. So we have the Tulsa Opera, the Tulsa Ballet, uh, the Performing Arts Center, the, ja the Jazz Hall of Fame. We've got the Woody Guthrie Museum. There are, you know, some fantastic breweries. You know, I drink wine, I don't drink beer, but a lot of the breweries have wine. In the winter, Welltown Brewery has, you know, their igloos up top and you've got these fantastic views. So there's so many unique spots to really have a great time and enjoy. Uh, our downtown Tulsa hotels are fantastic. You know, the Mayo, and then you've got like the rooftop on the Mayo. So you've got, you know, a little bar area right there that has live music sometimes. You've got Hotel Indigo, you've got The Brute. So if you're going to stay downtown, there's some fun places to stay. Now, the places aren't open all night. Usually, um, you know, things shut down at around 2 a.m. here. So you're not gonna be able to party all night. If that's what you do, I'm in bed usually by 9.30, but I wake up at 4.15. So in downtown, you basically have nine districts that just keep evolving and thriving. So like I said, our downtown really keeps getting better and I don't wanna be over talking about it, but it's but it's something that I love and people from other states love it. So I want you to be as excited about it as I am. So downtown, you've got the Tulsa Arts District, you've got the Blue Dome District, Brookside, Cherry Street, you've got the Deco District, East Village, Greenwood, Meadow Gold, and the Sobo District. So again, I really meant that with a huge grain of salt when I said that, you know, downtown Tulsa is like a mini LA, but it is, you know, it is very cool. And I think it's got the good without so much of, you know, the bad. And, you know, I haven't been to California in years and years, um, but I have friends from California and, you know, uh, they talk about the homelessness, they talk about the crime and there is homelessness in downtown Tulsa and it has gotten, you know, worse since COVID, but it's not the same. It's such a jewel and like I said, the people um, that I'm friends with from out of state just love our downtown areas and they're the absolute best to hang out with downtown because they know all the hot spots. 
But if downtown is not your vibe, our suburbs offer so many things too. What I'm trying to do is like give you that feel so when you can understand the cost of living, when you can understand that this is a tax friendly state, when you can understand that we're a business friendly state, when you can understand that people are nice here, that you can live an elevated lifestyle compared to what you're living. I think that's a huge draw to leave California. And I told you that what I said, you know, what my clients have in co common that have left California, and I just kind of alluded to it. They are looking for, you know, they're, they're people that are leaving because of politics. Uh, there are people that are leaving because of taxes. There are people that are leaving because of, you know, the laws that are put in place or the lack of laws when it comes to crime and those kind of things. So, you know, here in Oklahoma, we are a conservative state and we're probably the most conservative state, you know, that there is. With that being said, um, you know, your big cities are always going to be more liberal. So, you know, you definitely have that. Tulsa is, you know, a, a more liberal city, um, but you, all the suburbs, you know, surrounding it, you know, are pretty conservative. But, you know, having diversity is, you know, not, a, you know, is not a bad thing. You know, I want to keep our tax freedoms here. I want to keep our tax friendliness here. I want to keep our business friendliness. I want to uh, support our police. You know, I want those things. I don't want those things to change. And that's something that, you know, the people from California, I am seeing them with that here. That's what, you know, the people that are coming out from California and reaching out to me, those are the things that they're leaving. So that is what I see as the commonality. So another amazing thing about Tulsa is how easy it is to get absolutely, you know, anywhere in the Tulsa Metro. If you live in Tulsa, you know, you're gonna get in any Metro, you know, 15, 20 minutes tops. If you're going to, you know, maybe the far end of one of the suburbs, it might take you 30 minutes. Our surrounding suburbs, our top suburbs are going to be Jinx, Bixby, Broken Arrow, and Owasso. And it's going to take you, you know, like I said, 20, 30 minutes tops if you're going all the way to the end. You know, if you're going all the way to the, you know, the outskirts of the suburbs. But our highway system is so easy. Our roads are like a grid system and, and it is not stressful to drive here, in my opinion. When I drive in Dallas, it's stressful and I can only imagine driving in California. But I'm gonna tell you guys a funny story that I find about all of you that cracks me up and it's absolutely in good fun. It's just so, it's just the funniest thing ever that you guys do. If I met you for the first time, I would absolutely know that you were from California. If I got to talk with you for just a little bit uh, and it's not your accent, it's how you guys talk about getting places and making a conversation about it. I used to watch Saturday Night Live. Um, it's, it's been quite a few years since, you know, I've I've watched it, but I used to watch it. And the Californians were one of my um, favorite skits that they did, you know, one of the repeatable skits. And it was always just funny to me. But then when I started doing real estate and started having clients from California, it got so much funnier. You guys seriously make the way that you're going to get somewhere a conversation. Okay, so let me give you an example. If you're from Tulsa, I would say, let's meet at Lifetime Fitness at 5 a.m. But if you're from California, instead of saying, okay, your response to me would be, okay, I'm gonna take 117 to the Creek Turnpike. I'm going to get off a memorial. I'm gonna get gas, a quick trip, and then get back on the road and turn right at Lifetime. Except you'd probably give me the street name that I don't even know, that I, that I would never know. You guys know all the street names. And it's so funny because all of you guys do it. And it's even more detailed than that. Like I'm just being very slight. Like here, we just say where we're going and what time we're going to meet. You know, we don't really worry about the traffic, so there's no reason to talk about our routes. But you guys love it, and so it's the funniest thing to me. And my mom spent time in California. Uh, I was actually born there, but, you know, didn't live there long enough to have really any memories. But she does the same thing sometimes, and she's been here you know, over 40 years. So basically that whole big long story, just to tell you that our traffic is not bad enough to talk about, to make it a point of conversation. Now, I don't want you to think that there's no traffic because we do have traffic and at five o'clock traffic, you know, sometimes the roads can, you know, you can be waiting for a while, especially if there's construction. 
And there is construction a lot of times in, you know, the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. So you are going to deal with that, but that's, you know, you know, rush hour and, you know, but those are during rush hours. And I'll tell you one more quick story. One time, uh, one of my clients was following me and they were from California and I called them and I said, oh my goodness, I'm sorry I took you this way. I forgot it's the highest traffic area because it was, you know, we were kind of dragging it and it was slow and they laughed and they were like, what? We didn't notice this isn't traffic. And so it's just funny what perspective is. And if you want to go through my channel and look at videos, I've done a few driving tours and some of you guys really love them and appreciate them. To me, you know, they're super boring, um, but you, it does give you an idea of, you know, what driving on our highways is like. And if this video is giving you any value today, I would love for you to hit that subscribe and like button. And if there are things that I'm not going over or things that you want to know, you know, leave a comment. I don't always respond immediately, but I read every single one and I um, will make adjustments sometimes depending on the comment. Okay, so let's talk about housing a little bit of what you can buy here for the price. And really, you know, we have a sweet spot of, you know, from 400 to 850,000, you can really just get a lot. And of course, you know, the bigger the budget, the more bang you're going to get for your buck. But what we have in that price range here compared to what you guys have is, is pretty exceptional. You know, as I recorded this video, uh, Tulsa Homes had an average sales price of $296,000. And like I said, what you can get between that $400,000 and $850,000 range is pretty fantastic. So when I was comparing houses, of course I was looking at San Francisco and I looked at San Diego. You know, I was looking at average prices when I was comparing California at between like $551,000 to $960,000. And I'm pretty sure that it's gone up since then, which is pretty crazy when I look at what you're actually getting for that price. And again, so not only is the cost of your house going to be lower, you know, the cost of your living is going to be lower, but the things that you can do, you know, you have all this extra income too uh, by living here. So you can really enjoy, you know, dining out, shopping, taking vacations, you know, come to Oklahoma and if you really just miss your oceans and your mountains, you know, you save so much money, go take a vacation. And, you know, really, if you went out far enough, um, which might not seem too far out to you, you could get a ranch, you could get a hobby farm. I mean, depending on, you know, what you're willing to drive, you know, 45 minutes, an hour out of Tulsa. I mean, you can, you know, you're definitely going to find, you know, 10 acre properties way closer in, you know, 40 acres, 100 acres. I was looking at a 2100 acre listing and that was like a small town. And yes, it was, you know, priced at around $7 million, but you had over 2,100 acres. You had a 4,600 square foot house. You were 40 minutes from Tulsa. There were 12 ponds. I mean, it was amazing. Now we don't see that kind of acreage that close all the time, but I mean, it comes up. So definitely, you know, you want hundred plus acres, you know, you have options here. You know, they're not making land anymore. That's one thing that they'll, you know, they'll never make. So having that home ownership is fantastic. And, you know, having land is fantastic. You want a 170 acre ranch. You've got that 35 minutes out of Tulsa with a 4,300 square foot house, $1.3 million. So again, you just have a ton of options. And I am waiting until the end to show you actual houses for sale. Also, my information is in the description, so if you want to give me a call, shoot me a text, schedule a Zoom call, or email me, you'll find all my information in the description. And again, I make these videos so that when you are thinking about making that move, you reach out to me so I can be the one to help you make that seamless move to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, is our weather unbearable? No, not at all, but is it, you know, cool California weather, perfect temperature all the time. We have four seasons. Uh, our spring and fall seasons are absolutely lovely. We have the best patio weather, but they don't last a terribly long time. We probably have four really great months of, you know, just nice, perfect patio weather, um, where, you know, you just want to be outside all day. And then we've got winter and we've got summer. So it gets cold, cold in the winter and it gets hot, hot in the summer. And I have done a video over Tulsa weather specifically uh, 
that will give you, you know, all kinds of data, the number of sunny days, the number of days below freezing. But if you want the in-depth, that's the video to watch. But if you start researching the weather, you know, you're going to find things like tornadoes or it'll talk about our humidity. I actually am going to give you uh, a few quick facts right now because actually Tulsa, Oklahoma is considered to have a mild climate and a mild winter. Okay, so on average, there are 227 sunny days in the Tulsa area. The national average is 205, so we have more sunny days than the national average. And in California, you guys are at 274 days. Our best months are mid-September, October, April, and May. Our winters are gonna average 47 degrees, but December, January, and February, you have an average low temp that's between 26 to 30 degrees, with January being our coldest month. Okay, and some quick facts on tornadoes. Yes, Oklahoma is in Tornado Alley. Um, there's, all, there's actually some evidence, you know, that it's moving a little bit. Um, the Tulsa area actually gets less of the, you know, the devastating tornadoes that you see in the Oklahoma City Moore area. And Tulsa's are pretty mild, so you're averaging, you know, the F zeros to the EF zeros and F twos to EF twos, so the very, very mild ones. And you know, the great thing about tornadoes, you know, not that there's a great thing about a natural disaster, but it's nice with tornadoes, like you have a warning, so you know people can get a storm shelter. I don't have a storm shelter, but you know there's plenty of reputable companies. You can get a storm shelter put in your house. You know between eight to fifteen thousand dollars, roughly. Okay, but here's the thing: most Oklahomans do not, you know, do not follow the, you know, when there's the tornado warnings or the, the tornado sirens. Like what well, what we're gonna do is find some way to get access to, you know, public television, you know, have an antenna or if you have cable so that you can watch Travis Meyer on News on 6 and he will, he and the storm chasers are going to keep you, you know, totally in the know. Most Oklahomans are going to be out, you know, watching the storms, you know, trying to see, you know, a funnel cloud. That's not the scientific term. I can't remember what the term is. But I mean, you know, once he tells you, they're pretty good at, you know, showing you the sirens are going to be going off. They're pretty good at showing you like when you need to take cover. And when they say take cover, you know, go and take cover. And if you don't have a storm shelter, you're going to be at, you know, the center of your house. You know, you want to be in a space that doesn't have any, that doesn't have any windows or mirrors. As long as I have lived in Oklahoma, yes, there's been a couple of times I have taken shelter, but I've never been in a tornado. There, you know, there was a, you know, a recent tornado, you know, just a couple weeks ago, but they were, you know, all throughout the United States and it wasn't in Tulsa. It was outside of Tulsa, about 45 minutes outside of Tulsa, you know, so they, they do, they happen, but you know, we were watching the weather, uh, people have, you know, people have their storm shelters and you have, you know, for a natural disaster, you do have warning, you know, so that is the basics of our weather. And okay, in the summer, it's hot, it's humid. My hair doesn't mess up, but some of my friends, you know, they say their hair gets frizzy because of the humidity. If you're outside, you're going to sweat. I was in Vegas uh, just a few weeks ago and it was hot there, it was summer, but that heat was dry. And so, you know, it was different. So coming from California and that, you know, nice, beautiful climate that you get almost year round, you know, that's something that you could miss. And it's something that, you know, I, I want you to be aware of. All right, let's talk about some good things. Let's talk about our taxes. They are definitely going to be lower, you know, than what you're seeing in California. You know, Oklahoma fares really well. You know, so according to Wallet Hub, we rank 41st with a total tax burden of 7.12%. So out of all the states, you know, we're ranked down to 41. Our state's property tax burden is great, ranking us at the fourth lowest state for property taxes. And our income tax burden is in the bottom quartile, the bottom 25%. Now we have a higher sales tax. Inside, you know, Tulsa City Limits are gonna be at 8.51% sales tax, you know, but most of our goods and services are less expensive. And I don't know if it's just from, you know, watching the news. I mean, I would see, as I was doing my research, I see how we compared, you know, to you guys in California, a lot lower, but it just seems like I'm always seeing and hearing things of these, you know, 
high taxes of things that you guys have. You know, now moving on to schools. You know, if you're moving with children, then education is going to be something that is really important. And one of the great things about Tulsa is our, you know, our surrounding suburbs have the, you know, have some of the top performing schools in Oklahoma. Now, what I'm going to tell you is, you know, our schools are mandated by the Federal Department of Education, you know, to have certain standards. But in, you know, just recently talking to one of my um, clients from California that moved her kids here, one ended up being at a public school and one went to a private school. Uh, but when she said she really loved the teachers, she said they loved that they taught history here and like that, something something she wasn't quite prepared for is, you know, how into, you know, athletics everyone is here and the parents. So that was something that definitely uh, surprised her. And she has offered any of my clients, she did, you know, tons of research on private schools, on homeschooling options and public schools. So she has a wealth of knowledge, but yeah, be ready. People are super into athletics here, but you know, our schools, we have excellent band programs. We have, we have great academic programs. You've got, you know, your top schools here in the Tulsa area are going to be Jinx Public Schools, Bixby Public Schools, Owasso Public Schools, uh, Broken Arrow Public Schools, Tulsa, one of their charter schools. Tulsa, when you look, and you want to look at like niche.com and the different ranking sites, you're going to find that Tulsa public schools are, you know, lower performing than the surrounding suburbs and they're not highly rated. Um, but you also have some schools in there that, you know, are some of the best in the United States, like Booker T. Washington. There is also these bigger schools, you know, they have clubs and extracurricular activities, you know, whether that's athletics, you know, whether that's band, whether that's fine arts, computer sciences, you know, there is, you know, something for everybody, you know, there are things to do. But Oklahoma is a school choice state and you know there are some homeschooling options and I've seen I've seen some really great homeschooling co-ops and options uh, you know that we haven't seen in the past and I, I came from public education I was uh, I was a teacher I was a high school principal I was an assistant superintendent so I am a big public school advocate but I also understand that that's not a fit for everybody and so there are some great homeschooling options there are some excellent private schools we've got Casha Hall Monte Casino, Metro Christian, Lincoln Christian, just to name a few. All right, moving on to colleges and universities. We have the University of Tulsa, we have Oral Roberts University, Spartan School of Aeronautics. My brother-in-law is a pilot for United and he is a transplant from Michigan and came to Tulsa to go to Spartan School of Aeronautics. We've got Rayma Bible College. We have people from all over the world going to Rayma and Oral Roberts University. The University of Tulsa is a highly ranked private university. We have uh, the University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University. That is, you know, our big rivalry here in the Tulsa area. You know, my husband and I have you know, always been OU fans, and I was doing my doctoral studies there, but two of our children are at OSU, so we have been paying tuition to OSU, so we are, two of our children are at OSU, one's on the track team there, so we've been paying our tuition to OSU, so we definitely have love for both colleges now. You've got Northeastern State University, which is a great little small state college. And then you've got Tulsa Community College, which is, you know, has several campuses here at great for associate's degrees. Kids that live in Tulsa County uh, can get scholarships there. You know, there's academic, um, you know, based on academic performance and volunteer hours, but, you know, they can get a lot of their tuition paid for at Tulsa Community College based on Tulsa Achieves. And then our tech schools are fantastic. You know, we have Tulsa Tech and our career tech schools. Those are, those are pretty amazing. You know, so no matter, you know, what level you're looking for, there are definitely options, you know, for yourself, for your kids, uh, for higher education. I know we've talked about a lot, uh, but again, our suburbs, 
and I've done suburb videos. So watch the videos over in Jinx, Oklahoma, Bixby, Oklahoma, Owasso, Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Each of the, those are the top suburbs in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it's, you know, it's a different feel. You're going to have, you know, suburban to rural, depending on, you know, how far you go out. So uh, you're going to have a lot of new construction options. You're, you know, the further you go in the suburbs, you're going to have, you know, affordable, you know, more affordable options for, you know, having a house with a little bit of land, you know, half an acre. I was just talking to somebody moving from Dallas today. And, you know, one of their, one of the important factors is, you know, getting, you know, a half acre lot. And so in that five hundred, five hundred fifty thousand dollar range, you can get a nice house with a half acre lot, you know, if you're willing to be out just a little bit further. So I'm going to show you a couple houses and then I'm going to jump on the screen and show you what you can get. And like I said, if you subscribe, you know, I do home tours, I do neighborhood tours. So you really uh, get to see more of what the suburbs are like here. And I think most people, if they don't know uh, Oklahoma, well, not Oklahoma, but if you don't know the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, uh, you might really think that, you know, Tulsa is, you know, podunk or hick and that there's nothing available. Um, but that is, couldn't be, you know, anywhere closer away from the truth. Everything is literally so convenient and because it's so easy to get anywhere, I mean, you can get to, you can get to any kind of shopping, you know, because everything is so easy to get to, you can get anywhere you want to go so fast. So as far as shopping goes, you know, we've got uh, two Costco's, you know, one in Tulsa, one in Owasso, and the one in Owasso is the biggest Costco in the world. Uh, we've got Sam's Club, we've got Target, Starbucks, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, as far as shopping, you know, if you're going to do high-end shopping, you're going to go to Utica Square. Uh, we have Saks Fifth Avenue, White House Black Market, Williams Sonoma, Pottery Barn. You're not lacking for anything. You don't have to worry that you're not going to have shopping needs as far as, you know, grocery stores. We have Reesers. Uh, again, we've got Whole Foods, Trader Joe's all kinds of restaurants. You have the big box stores, you know, you've got Best Buy, you've got Lowe's, you've got Home Depot. We have shopping malls. We've got the Tulsa Hills area, which, you know, has more of those big box stores. We actually have a shopping mall, Woodland Hills Mall, uh, you know, that has actual stores in it that's still like, you know, the old school malls. Then we've got, you know, boutique shopping. So if you want to be shopping on Brookside, on Cherry Street, uh, downtown, it has some um, cute little boutiques. I mean, that is something that surprised me that people didn't think, you know, was available. And so I haven't really spelled it out, but there are, there are plenty of shopping opportunities. You have absolutely everything you need within 15 minutes. Okay. Now to give you a quick peek at housing and I say a quick peek, but you know, on the houses that I picked, you know, that's probably still going to be, you know, five to 10 minutes, but I'm showing you, you know, different houses and different price ranges and different suburbs. But I want to show you this map to show you our top, our top suburbs. You know, uh, we've got Tulsa right here. Uh, the main suburbs are going to be Bixby, this way, Jinx, Broken Arrow. You've got, oh, You've got Owasso up here, and I didn't pick any Owasso houses, and I didn't pick any Owasso houses for the sake of time, but Owasso Stone Canyon is absolutely amazing, and that area is fantastic. And you know, this is just a handful of houses there. You know, there's so much more. I just tried to give you, you know, a little bit in different price ranges. We're going to go through these pretty quickly. Uh, so in the $350,000 price range, uh, you've got this three bedroom, two bath house, um, a little bit older, but good neighborhood, Providence Hills, good, you're in Bixby schools. Uh, Bixby, you know, is one of the top rated schools in Oklahoma. They won the state championship. Uh, last year in football, um, lots of different things for the kids to do. Uh, you are a little bit further out of Tulsa, but I mean, 20 minute drive. And there's some parts of Big Speed that just, you know, are right up to Tulsa. Uh, this neighborhood has a splash pad. It has, you know, a swimming pool. Um, and there is, you know, a lot of, you know, housing like this for $350,000. I mean, that's a nice house. I didn't focus so much on the lower priced housing. Bixby on a half acre, Magnolia Heights. This is new construction, a little over a half acre. So you're a little bit further, but again, I mean, you're so close to Tulsa. I'm not going through all the pictures, just giving you 
just a little, you know, some highlights and we're moving on for time's sake. But if you, you know, if the housing, you know, if Tulsa does interest you, you know, reach out so I can specifically talk to you about your needs and then I can, you know, really show you all your options. Okay, this one uh, is 649,000, four acres, three bedroom, two bath, 2,100 square feet. So uh, trees all around, but you've got, you know, a little shop and not again, looking at everything, but let me show you a little bit of the house because it was a little bit older, but you've got four acres for $650,000 in Bixby. Okay. This one, uh, $750,000 on a half acre, uh, almost 4,500 square feet, four bedroom, three and a half bath. Uh, one of my real estate friends uh, from Colorado and Utah is, she just got licensed here too, is looking at this house and I love it and I love the neighborhood. So again, we're just looking at a few things. Okay, five bedroom, four bath, 5,400 square feet for $825,000. Uh, not new construction, so a little bit older, but when you're, um, you know, getting a little bit older, you save on that price point a little bit. And it's not, you know, it still looks pretty new. I'm not going through everything. That's on point four acres. Gray Oaks. Uh, I love this neighborhood too. Uh, 4,600 square feet, five bedroom, four and a half bath on a half acre right under a million uh, new construction. Beautiful features, lots of extras. Okay, now this one I put on there because it's unique and it is 1.4 million at 6,000 square feet. It needs updated, but you have your you have your own private runway for a plane. So, you know, people who travel, you'd wanna update this house, but you know, just wanna get away, uh, you know, buy a house that has its own um, private runway. And I put this one on here because it's 12 acres uh, for 1.4 million, 3,800 uh, square feet, almost 3,900. But again, just showing you different kind of options. Shop. If you hear that um, little pattering and whining, those are my dogs. Um, they're getting ready to go out and play and they're excited. So, you know, um, some people would think the style is dated, uh, but you know, paint can go a long way, new flooring, um, you know, new countertops, and you've got 12 acres. Uh, now we're in Broken Arrow, uh, 550,000. Four bedroom, three and a half bath, 3,300 square feet, a little bit more than 3,300. Lovely home. You know, you can get such a great house in that price range, you know, that five, 550. What is this? Yeah, 550. Uh, 650 right here, a little bit older, but you've got an in ground pool, 4,000 square feet. And um, it was the fall when this picture was taken. Cool. So nice outdoor space. And the inside is nice too. Uh, 779,000, five bedroom, three bath, 4,200 square feet on a little under half an acre. You have that pool. Uh, 
And you know, these neighborhoods, the older neighborhoods, you know, you're gonna have, um, you know, the mature trees, uh, where the newer neighborhoods, you know, you're gonna have less shrubbery. Um, I'm going all the way on this one because I wanna show you guys the cool. But you know, the HOA is here. A lot of people, there's the pool. A lot of people ask about the HOAs. There's the yard view. And uh, there's neighborhoods that don't have them. Um, but most of them have them, but they're not super crazy. Oh, and this is in Forest Ridge. And Forest Ridge um, is one of our top master plan communities, the house that we just saw. This one is too. In one of our master plan communities, uh, you've got the pool, uh, you've got the golf course. Um, you can get be a discount if you're a member for the country club there. It's got a restaurant. Uh, members can go to the activity house and, you know, they've got pickleball courts and, you know, more pools and an exercise room, restaurant. So, you know, Forest Ridge is someplace that a lot of people like to be. And this one is in Forest Ridge too, $1.35 million, uh, 5,200 square feet on a half acre lot, four bedroom, four full one half bath. Oh my goodness, the design on this is stunning. It's just beautiful. I love this house. <laughs> uh, you see the curve island that you don't see all the time. Uh, super amazing quality. Oh, looky here. This is the butler's pantry. Amazing. I actually, I have done a video over this house. So if you want to see this house, it's, it's just stunning. The bathroom. Oh my goodness. Uh, I want this house actually. <laughs> Still in Broken Arrow. Uh, Broken Arrow, one of the top schools in Oklahoma. Again, uh, biggest high school in Oklahoma. You're going to have, you know, the kids can do everything. They have a fantastic man. Uh, okay, now we're in Jinx, um, another top rated school system. Uh, 539,000, four bedroom, three bath, 3,000 square feet. So pretty. Okay, 674,000 in Jinx, uh, 3,300 square feet, four bedroom, three bath, uh, two acre lot. This one's beautiful too. I love the accent walls and the lighting. Got the waterfall edge on the island. Very beautiful. Am I knocking your socks off? Are you guys wowed? If you're wowed, put it in the comments. Uh, Stone Creek, half acre lot, 839,000. Four bedroom, uh, four full, two half bath, 3,700 square feet. I have, um, oh, and this lot backs up to a creek. I've done a video on this house too. New construction, great design. I might take you a little bit further just because I want you to see the lot. Uh, I love the accent walls, the bathroom. Oh my goodness, this closet is fantastic. We're getting there. There was so many, there were so many great rooms in this house. It's upstairs. Look at this outdoor space. You know, you just got this little oasis. Okay. All right, Tulsa. Now, the thing about Tulsa is um, your average priced home is much lower uh, than the suburbs that I just showed you, uh, about $289,000. Um, the houses are older. You're not going to get a lot of new construction in the Tulsa area. And the houses that I'm showing you are in Midtown, and Midtown commands, you know, just a higher price at people. It's so, you know, convenient. People love the shopping. You're close to Utica Square. You're close to the gathering place. You're close to Philbrook Museum, you're close to Cherry Street, Brookside. It's just so convenient and you have so much access to, you know, local restaurants and shopping. So uh, this house is 649,900, uh, almost 3,000 square feet. 
but even though they're older, they've been, you know, they've been remodeled and they're so charming and, you know, I love a Midtown house too. Most have been updated or just remodeled. And our last house in Sunset Park, uh, which is Maple Ridge. Uh, Maple Ridge is an, you know, is a known neighborhood in Midtown. 1,049,000, you've got this Mediterranean style house. Uh, so unique, I just wanted to show it to you. Um, absolutely just beautiful. So there is so much, I just touched on it guys. And another great thing about Tulsa, Oklahoma, the surrounding suburbs is the people are literally genuinely nice. Um, it's a slower pace here, but it is, it's a little bit of a slower pace and people are going to say hi to you. They're going to talk to you, you know, when you're checking out at the register, you're going to walk around and probably see people that you end up knowing making friends. Uh, so even though it's, a city in a metropolitan like it's still you know it's very very friendly and like truly friendly like people are nice now it can be a little bit harder to get to know people like to where you're you know strong friends but there are so many ways to you know get to know people you know volunteering churches professional networking events you know there's there's fantastic opportunities to get to know people oh and another thing that i did not talk on enough was the gathering place the gathering place is absolutely phenomenal it is at in the top 10 world destinations of people wanting to see it is an incredible incredible place um that was all privately funded and donated by the george kaiser family foundation and it you know for you know for kids for adults you know it's not central park but it is just as special you know the kids can go to these playgrounds that are like wonderlands uh you've got the lodge where you can go and you can work in you know it's really like a country club but there's no cost to it so anybody can go and enjoy it they have events there all the time they have things for you know the kids to do and to learn and you know and our arkansas river has always been a little bit dry but finally uh, on labor day they are opening up zinc lake and so they have um, crafted a new dam and a pedestrian bridge so there can be water activities out on the river now and i was driving by uh you know as i was recording at the some pieces of this video for you um and you know on my drives all the time now and it is so great to see all the water in the river so there there are so many things that i know that you will love about tulsa i hope that video was helpful and again it doesn't matter if you're moving in nine days 90 days nine months it's never too early and it's never too late to give us a call so if you're thinking about making that move to tulsa oklahoma reach out to us me or someone on my team would love to show you around town